As Ansu Fadi and Ricky Pooj hope to break into the first team, we always hear the same line. A line has become an overplayed trope. Players just need to be patient, like Sergio Roberto. They just need to fight and stick around, and eventually they'll break into the first team if they're good enough. As La Masia graduates Messi and Busquets, along with La Masia attendees, Gerard Piquet and Jordi Alba hit the latter part of their career, the next generation of players is nowhere to be found. Sure, Ter Stegen, Griezmann, Semedo, and Umtiti all fit in that 24 to 29 age range, but Roberto is the only homegrown name in the bunch. The promise of La Masia has been placed on the shoulders of Fati, Puj, Alice Callado, and others, but there's no guarantee that they'll be around in the long run. Today, we're looking at the lost generation, the group of players currently in their prime that were supposed to take over the reins and continue the La Masia dream. Hi, I'm Dan Hilton, and this is the Barcelona Podcast YouTube Exclusive. There are a lot of players to name, and I'm leaving a bunch of players off, but the reason for making this video comes down to four players who play in current positions of need that were heralded as the next in line, but for one reason or another, didn't stick around long enough to find out. The first name we always have to mention is Thiago Alcantara. Unlike almost everyone else we can name, Thiago is the one that got away. Injuries have hurt his stock some, but when healthy, he's a top midfielder in the world. Long seen as a successor to Xavi, he didn't want to wait around for the position to be his, and he followed Pep Guardiola to Bayern Munich. He's 28 now, and if he had stayed, Barca's transfer history would be quite different. Maybe Barca never moved for Frankie de Jong or Artur, and even Rakitic and Artur Vidal may never have arrived. Some kool still pine to get him back, but his injury history and importance to Bayern, aka his price tag, are the red flags. Still, he's the biggest what-if on this list. The other what-if is still ongoing. Alejandro Grimaldo is 24 and on the youngest end of what I'm considering this missing generation, but it's easy to admit Barca could use the current Benfica left back. A poor relationship with Luis Enrique was at the crux of him leaving the club, and you can make the argument that he never reaches the heights he has without a move and consistent playing time. That argument goes for a lot of these players, but Grimaldo backing up Jordi Alba may not have been the answer to his development. If he did want to come back, I bet Barca would take him, but it would be costly. He's one of the most sought-after left-backs in the world. Players 3 and 4 are two guys that would be useful today, but were seen as surplus due to their level and the timing of the players around them. Mark Bartra, who made his way to Real Betis via Borussia Dortmund, is now 29, but was stuck behind Gerard Piquet, and wasn't showing enough to make it an honest competition between the two. I was happy to see him get regular football, and I consider him one of those players who just fell short of the lofty level required at Barcelona. The same can be said of Martin Montoya, who was stuck behind Dani Alves as he desperately needed first-team football, which he found at Valencia and now Brighton. It felt like longer, but he was only around the first team for three seasons. He only made 67 appearances, and his claim to fame is that he subbed on in 2012 to form that all-La Masia 11. Interesting times, those. Alright, let's talk some other midfielders. It's the hardest place for a player to break in at Barca, and as for the majority of these players, they tried to be patient. Rafinha and Sergi Semper dealt with injury after injury, and before we knew it, they're 27 and 25 respectively. Rafinha is technically still on loan at Celta de Vigo and finally generally healthy, Sandra's sprained ankle, making 21 appearances this year and contributing two goals and two assists, but more importantly, staying on the field and trying to help Celta avoid relegation. Samper, meanwhile, headed to Japan to join Andres Iniesta and company at Vissel Kobe after a series of awful injuries and failed loans at Barca. The final name is Jonathan Dos Santos, who spent two years with Barca's first team before heading to Villarreal. He did make 29 appearances total, but the current Los Angeles Galaxy play was always too far down the depth chart. Brother Giovanni Dos Santos could probably be mentioned here too, but he left a little too early in his trajectory to probably be really considered. There was some promise, but Kules weren't missing him too much throughout his journeyman career. Now at Club America in Mexico, the elder Dos Santos brother is still only 30 years old. The last group is the most painful in the bunch, as any group of Mercurial forwards is expected to be. All had too high of expectations put on them, truth be told, but it's still pretty incredible to think that not one of them stuck around for very long. With Messi always starting, Luis Suarez up top, and Neymar brought in, it was going to be a stretch that any of these names could ever carve out a regular position, but it certainly would have helped the depth of the squad. The first to go and saddest story of the bunch was Boyan Kerkic, who broke in as a teenager scoring 12 goals in his maiden campaign back in 2007-08. He scored 41 total goals in four seasons, but the pressure got to him. The current Montreal Impact player has spoken about his mental health and the weight of playing at Barca, and I really wish the best for him. He's been gone for almost a decade, but he's still just 29 years old. The other very highly talented forward was Gerard Delefeu. Setting goal-scoring records in La Masia, it just never worked out for him at the first team. 
Just two goals in 23 matches is all he could muster. A selfishness and lack of defensive understanding were the major critiques by managers that didn't want to trust him. He has succeeded as a pro at Everton and most recently Watford, though a devastating injury suffered last week will keep him out until at least next season. Awful news for a player who is playing with confidence. He'll be 26 when he returns, and hopefully that's sooner than later. The other three to be mentioned did have roles with the first team, but never threatened the starters. Christian Teo, still just 28, scored 20 goals with 13 assists in three seasons. Not too bad, actually. He was a squad player in some dominating seasons under Pep Guardiola, but was never going to stick around. The same can be said of Sandro Ramirez, who was a part of the treble-winning season under Luis Enrique, and Munir al who was earmarked for greatness, but needed playing time to make things work. Now at Sevilla, the 24-year-old is having a decent but not all-inspiring season. Seven goals and three assists in 17 matches, while playing all three front positions. What do you think of my hypothesis about La Masia's lost generation? Do you regret the club letting any of these names go? Let us know in the comments and drop us a like and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, Forza Barca.